Wake up, sleeper, he is risen. We are risen with him, paradise. Flung wide open, he is risen. We are risen with him. abounds in deepest waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you never Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the water wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. My 
is not here. He is um, in Iowa with his wife's family, enjoying the, their second Christmas up there. Um, today, we're going to do something different. The order of worship is different, and I want to make it clear Brad suggested this, uh, <laughs> so we'll talk about that in a minute, why we're doing something different, but we are going to be doing the Wesleyan Covenant Services, that we have not done here for quite a few years. Anyway, so welcome this morning, and... Well, I'll tell you whether or not we're uh, ready for it, 2023 is here this morning, but I do want to welcome you to worship at Wilkes Boulevard United Methodist Church, and if you'd please join me in our welcome this morning, whatever your race, ethnicity, gender identity, sexual orientation, or economic situation, you are welcome welcome here. here. Whatever your age or ability, background or belief, I am welcome here. Whatever your relationship status or family structure, we are welcome welcome here. No matter who you are or what you've done, I welcome you in the name of Christ. Now please stay where you are, but take just a moment to acknowledge those that are around you that are here in church this morning. Please stand for our opening praise hymn. You'll find it in the Red Book, 383. This is a day of new beginnings, verses 1 through 4. This is a day of new beginnings. Time to remember and move on. Time to believe what love is bringing. For by the life and death of Jesus, God's mighty spirit now as then can make for us a world of difference as faith and hope are born again. Then let us with the spirit's daring step from the past and leave behind our disappointment built and grieving seeking new paths and sure to find christ is alive and goes before us to show and share what love can do this is a day of new beginnings our god is making all things new Please be seated and prepare your hearts for prayer as we sing our prayer hymn. Morning has broken, Red Book, number 145. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for the springing, fresh from the word. If the rain's new, sunlit from heaven, like the first dew fall on the first grass. Oh. 
God's recreation of the new day. Our prayer this morning is one we're going to do together. We would hopefully have papers. If not, it'll be on the screen. Let us pray. O oh God, searcher of all our hearts, you have formed us as a people and claimed us for your own. As we come to acknowledge your sovereignty and grace and to enter anew into a covenant with you, reveal any reluctance or falsehood within us. Let your spirit impress your truth on our inmost being and receive us in mercy for the sake of our mediator, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And now we'll pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Our first scripture is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Our second scripture is from the Gospel according to John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Here we are on the first day of a new year. How appropriate that we're here together in God's house on that first day. It should get us started off in a, the right foot, so to speak. Sometimes when we start the new year, it feels like we're standing on a precipice and we're looking out into space because we don't know what's coming next. And in the last few years, that's certainly been true, hasn't it? We really don't know what's coming next. Um, as I thought about this and began to prepare, I kept running into lots and lots of words that started with the prefix R-E. That prefix means 
again are back. And it really is appropriate right now. Um, you guys know that I, that I study romance novels, okay? And um, a few years ago, I got involved with this, and it started like most research does with a question, or a couple of questions. The first question was, what are the most popular themes in award-winning romance novels? I wanted to know, what, what do we like, okay? What is it we like the most, okay? And then, along with that, what does this say about us? Well, I have at least partially an answer to that, okay? And here it is. There is one theme that came out in my research way ahead of all the other ones, and here it is. Second chances are a reunion. Now, this is a situation where the, the two characters have had some sort of a relationship in the past. It apparently didn't make it at that time, and they were apart, and then they reconnect some ways, and they, they form a new relationship. And I think the reason we like this is that we love the idea of a second chance. We love the idea that we could have a, a do-over, you know? Um, and in most of these situations, they, were, they regretted that, this, that they fell apart, that the relationship fell apart. But far and away, that was the A number one theme in the books, which a lot of people, even the writers, find that unusual. So this is the time of the year where we're going to see lots and lots of rewords coming up, and we'll start with remember. We usually spend a little time remembering. Probably last night, if you were with people, you might have sang Auld Lang Syne, and we look back. And then we also, at this time of the year, always review. Everybody has the year in review. Have you noticed that? Everybody has one. Every Every magazine has one, TV shows have one, they all have the year review. The only thing that ever bothers me, though, is like nothing happens that week between Christmas and New Year's, you know? Because they've already done the year in review, so, you know. So poor Barbara Walters, passing away, got lost till the end of the year, you know? So that, that's what happened. This morning, while we're here together, we can have a, a time of respite, a little moment before we start this year to stop and to think to relax just a little bit, and to reflect. This is the time of year where people make resolutions, okay? And we all think we're going to reinvent ourselves, don't we? Yeah. And okay, so here's like, maybe we're going to exercise more and cook healthy meals and, and lose weight. Maybe we're going to clean up the clutter and organize our lives, you know? Maybe we're going to give up some bad habits, whatever they are, that bothers you. Or, on a positive note, maybe we're going to, like, finish projects that we started or take, go back to school or take some training to do something different or get a new job. You never know. But this is the time of the year where we always think we're going to do all these wonderful things, don't we? Because we have the fresh start. The Bible is loaded with these re-words, and we'll talk about a few of them. You know, God is, gives us second chances. The whole thing is about second chances, isn't it? Um, and the Hebrew people, for instance, the word return shows up, are you ready? In the Bible, over 400 times. The Hebrew people, would, if you read through, would leave and fall away, and then they would return, and then they'd fall away, and then they would return. You know, um, the cool part is God always says, come back. You can return. You can always come back. They talk about rebuilding and replanting. Here from Ezekiel. Then the nations are left all around you shall know that I, the Lord, have rebuilt the ruined places and replanted that which was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will do it. Restore. I like that word, you know. I restore. Ever watch the shows on TV? They're restoring buildings. It's like the building is really a mess, and we're going to make it beautiful again. We're going to restore it. And, of course, we know from the, the Psalm 23, he restores our soul. Revive. Now, that's a big church word, isn't it? Okay. And Isaiah says, For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, 
I dwell in the high and holy place and also with those who are contrite and humble in spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the, of the contrite. And of course, churches, we had revival. And the idea is to bring back to life our faith, to reactivate our faith. Now this one we've heard a lot of times, right? Do you remember a couple of weeks ago when Brad said it meant think again? It always reminds me, like I'm thinking like God is looking at us going, and you're thinking, I really want to do this, and he's going like, think again. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and that's what that reminds me of, or repent. And refresh. Here's one where you have both of them in it. That's it. Okay. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord that he may send the Messiah appointed for you, that is, Jesus. Who, uh, what's more, who must remain in heaven until the time of universal restoration that God announces long ago now through his holy prophets. How about rejoice? You know, and these famous lines from Philippians, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. And renew that those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint and another big one reconcile I know uh, Brad talks a lot about reconciliation is putting us back in the right place with God the Corinthians says so if anyone is in Christ there is a new creation Everything old has passed away. Look, new things have come into being. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ since God is making his appeal through us we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made the one who knew no sin to be sin, so that we, in him, we might become the righteousness of God. And of course, rebirth. He saved us not because of any works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy, that the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. And redeem. It's amazing all these words, isn't it? Isaiah says, I have swept away your transgressions like a cloud and your sins like mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. And of course, the word that we've heard in our song this morning, the whole essence of our faith, resurrection. Of course, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, though they die, will live. So the bottom line is, Christ gives us a second chance. Today we're going to talk about a renewal of a covenant. Christianity is a choice. It's a choice that we make or we don't make. You know, it's up to us. And today we're going to talk about recommitting ourselves to our beliefs. And we're going to do it through this Wesleyan covenant service. This has been, I'll let me give you the background. Here's John Wesley, good old John Wesley, there he is. Um, he read this kind of service in another person's writing, and he was so moved by it that in 1755, they first held this service. He published it in a pamphlet in 1780, and from that time, for the, from 1780 for the next 100 years, it was used in that form in England all the time. It was used as a night watch service for the uh, Christmas, uh, New Year's Eve or as a New Year's Day service. And they did it every, every, every single year at that time. Um, it's an annual reaffirmation of our covenant with God. And so Wesley was very big on this. He thought it was a really good idea. It's a time to take a moment and reaffirm our, ourselves with God. But I think particularly for us in this church, we're so busy doing the work, that it's a good time just to stop and think and focus on your inner self for just a little while. As we come closer to doing this service, I want you to think about 
the first time you were committed to Christ. Now, it might have been like a big event, like Susan Marsh. I don't know if you've heard her story, but it was huge. I mean, she was, uh, went through a conversion experience that was honestly like uh, Saul on the road to Damascus. It was, it was big, okay? Um, otherwise, you might have been gone through a series of little commitments. I think that was more like for me, going through a series. They were all sincere, but they kept building up. Or maybe there's people that just grew up in the church and never thought anything else about it. They just believed it, okay? But I want you to think about that, about when you made a commitment to Christ. Um, there's probably people here that have not made this commitment or don't choose to make that commitment, and that is perfectly okay. We're going to be doing this service, and we're going to be promising things. Anybody that doesn't want to promise it, you don't have to promise it. God doesn't want you to. We don't want you to. If, if that's not where you're at, that's fine. I would recommend that you just let the words roll over you. Just take them in, because there's a lot of, of stuff in the words of the covenant service. All right. Um, it's going to talk about kneeling and putting your hands up. Uh, you don't have to. It's kind of figurative. But if you want to, that's okay, too. Okay, it does talk about that. You don't have to do it. Okay, now that's about where we're going to get today. The online people, um, if you would like to have a copy of this covenant service, please send to Facebook this morning, send your email address, and I will send you a copy of the service so you can read it at home. But it's pretty long, and we're not going to make it to do it together here. Okay? All right. All right, we're going to take a minute here before we start that, and we're, oh, ministry moments. Okay. Here we go. Miss Carolyn Hunt back there, the Hunt Perry, there she is. She said she would like to, uh, she would like to have some more people that are willing to be greeters. We have a little problem in that most of our greeters are also running the slides or um, making the breakfast or doing any number of other things around here. So we need some people that might not be tied up with that thing. It ex explains in here what it involves. Get here by about 945 and kind of watch out for people that come in late, that kind of a thing. If you're interested in doing that, please, uh, their email address for Carolyn is on here, and you can uh, send that to her. I also want to mention that it's not actually the following, but Como Gibbs, uh, Turning Point was in Como Gibbs, and this is our hmm, third or fourth year, fourth maybe, of doing this. And I'll be honest with you, we set a goal, we thought, we're not going to make it, but it's a good goal. It's a good goal. And I checked this morning, so it ended yesterday, Como Gibbs ended yesterday, and we had exceeded that goal. So this is really, really good. I will tell you that since we've had the cold weather and a lot of things, people in our community have been very generous to us. It's, it's really lovely to see. Uh, really good things going on. So good news. And if any of you are donated, thank you. If you have friends that donated to Como Gibbs, thank them, because we, we went over the goal. So now, every year it's gotten bigger. It's, it's great. Okay, we're going to take our offering, and if I can get some people that would help out with the offering plates, that would be lovely. Nobody's come moving up. <laughs> get some people to help out with that, and then we'll do our offering, and then we'll go to the service.
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Names are set up, as you know. We're going to keep this up here because there's a lot of lot for us to do in here yet. Okay. Follow along. You don't have to take notes or anything. Where are you from? From Delaware. Okay, I'll come to the end. I'll come to the end of it. Okay. It's okay. We'll be okay. Oh, thank you. There it is. Lovely. Thank you. Okay. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the, the Christian life is redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. Through baptism, we have entered this life and have been admitted into the new covenant of which Jesus Christ is the mediator. He sealed it with his own blood that we might last forever. On the one side, God promises to give us new life in Christ, the source and perfecter of our faith. On the other side, we are pledged to live no more for ourselves, but only for Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. From time to time, we renew our covenant with God, especially when we reaffirm the baptismal covenant and gather at the Lord's table. Today, however, we meet as the generations before us have met to renew the covenant that binds us to God. Let us make this covenant of God our own. Commit yourselves to Christ as his servants. Give yourselves to him that you may belong to him. Christ has many services to be done. Some are more easy and honorable. Others are more difficult and disgraceful. Some are suitable to our inclinations and interests. Others are contrary to both. In some we may please Christ and please ourselves, but then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. It is necessary, therefore, that we consider what it means to be a servant of Christ. Let us, therefore, go to Christ and pray. Let me be your servant under your command. I will no longer be my own. I will give up myself to your will in all things. Be satisfied that Christ shall give you your place and work. Lord, make me what you will. I put myself fully into your hands. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and with a willing heart give it to all to your pleasure and disposal. Christ the Savior of none but his, uh, be the Savior of none but his servants. He is the source of all salvation to those who obey. Christ will have no servants except by consent. Christ will not accept anything except full consent to all that he requires. Christ will be all in all or he will be nothing. Confirm this by this by, by a holy covenant. To make this covenant a reality in your life, listen to these admonitions. First, set aside some time, more than once, to be spent alone before the Lord in seeking earnestly God's special assistance and gracious acceptance of you, in carefully thinking through the conditions of the covenant, in searching your hearts whether you have already freely given your life to Christ. Consider what your sins are. Consider the laws of Christ, how holy, strict, and spiritual they are, and whether you 
after having carefully considered them, are willing to choose them all. Be sure you are clear in these matters. See that you do not lie to God. Second, be serious and in a spirit of holy awe and reverence. Third, claim God's covenant. Rely upon God's promise of giving grace and strength so you can keep your promise. Trust not your own strength and power. Fourth, resolve to be faithful. You have given to the Lord your hearts, you have opened your mouths to the Lord, and you have dedicated yourself to God. With God's power, never go back. And last, be then prepared to renew your covenant with the Lord. Fall down on your knees, lift your hands toward heaven, open your hearts to the Lord as we pray. O righteous God, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, see me as I fall down before you. Forgive my unfaithfulness in not having done your will, for you have promised mercy to me if I turn to you with my whole heart. God requires that you shall put away all your idols. I hear from the bottom of my heart, renounce them all, covenanting with you that no known sin shall be allowed in my life. Against your will, I have turned my love toward the world. I, in your power, I will watch all temptations that would lead me astray from you. For my own righteousness is riddled with sin, unable to stand before you. Through Christ, God has offered to be your God again, if you would only let him. Before heaven and earth, I here acknowledge you as my Lord and God. I take you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for my portion and vow to give myself, body and soul, as your servant to serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. God has given the Lord Jesus Christ as the only way and means of coming to God. Jesus, I do here on bended knees accept Christ as the new and living way and sincerely join myself in a covenant with him. O blessed Jesus, I come to you hungry, sinful, miserable, blind, and naked, unworthy to e wash even the feet of your servants. I do here with all my power accept you as my Lord and head. I renounce my un unworthiness and vow that you are the Lord, my righteousness, I renounce my own wisdom and take you for my only guide. I renounce my own will and take your will as my law. Christ has told you that you must suffer with him. I do here covenant with you, O Christ, to take my lot with you as it may fall. Though your grace, I promise that neither life nor death shall part me from you. Christ has given, I mean, God has given holy laws as the rule of your life. I do here willingly put my neck on your yoke to carry your burden. All your laws are holy, just, and good. I therefore take them as the rule for my words, thoughts, and actions, promising that I will strive to order my whole life according to your direction and not allow myself to neglect anything I know to be my duty. The Almighty God searches and knows your heart. O oh God, you know that I make this covenant with you today without guile or reservation. If any falsehood should be in it, guide me and help me to set it right. And now, glory be to you, O oh God the Father, who I from this day forward shall look upon as my God and Father. Glory to you, O God the Son, who have loved me and washed me in my sins in your own blood and is now my Savior and Redeemer. Glory to you, O God the Holy Spirit, who by your almighty power have turned my heart from sin to God. O mighty God, the Lord omnipotent, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have now become my covenant friend, and I, through your infinite grace, 
have become your covenant servant. So be it, and let the covenant I made on earth be ratified in heaven. Amen. Okay, it says on here, you are advised to take this covenant not only in your heart, but in word, not only in word, but in writing. Therefore, with all reverence, lay the service before God, the Lord as your act and deed. And when you have done this, sign it. You don't have to do it right now, but you can do it when you choose. And then keep it as a reminder of the holy agreement between God and you that you may remember it during doubts and temptations. A very appropriate hymn, I think. Take my life and let it be. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord keep you. And may God's face to. And may God's face to. Shine upon. Shine upon. And as we part ways. And as we part ways. May you know God's grace. May you know God's grace. May love everlasting. May love everlasting. Keep you strong. Keep you strong. To God be the glory forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. To God be the glory forever and ever. To forever and ever.